below the war of words between Noel Ferguson and Paul Krugman has intensified with both slating the other um, but who is correct and if there is a third contender to this this uh, argument between what might be called the monetarist or the Canadian view between that is um, Noel Ferguson and Paul Krug Krugman and Joseph Stiglitz but it's not that simple because Noel Ferguson is not taking a direct monetarist view he has actually praised Ben Bernanke who has in continued the expansionist uh, monetary policy of uh, Alan Greenspan who arguably is responsible in Paul Krugman's own words uh, of causing this crisis yet Paul Krugman is in a um, is in a paradox because he's asking for a more stimulus not less uh, stimulus money and to nationalise the banks to get a public works regime going all Keynesian ideas but is he correct and is Niall Ferguson wrong? In the social democratic or social market way of doing things in economics, it's easy to, easy for people to say that all they all people know how to do is to increase the money supply and um, increase public works regimes, public money, public expenditures. But this is not so. This also is not so true. You only have to look at the the ECB and the way that. Europe, as a social democratic uh, continent, basically, is re-evaluating how it does things and what it's doing and also the expansion of its money supply. What, it, what is most important is the context, the magnitude and the time, the timing as well. Because if Noel Ferguson is correct, we should be reducing taxes as Bush did in 2001 and two, to 2003 after the 9-11 attacks which caused a, a blip recession um, which people can blame on 9-11 and also on the Federal Reserve um, for its monet monet monetary policy of increasing inflation in the US economy and exporting it to Europe which Europe is now having to pay for the um, for the US collapse basically in the pre in up to the present time, um, but we're looking at something that isn't just a blip. Paul Krugman is saying that we need to uh, have a, a, a expansionist monetary policy to decrease the risk of inf of deflation, deflationary risk. Uh, as we saw in Japan is perhaps even worse than inflationary risk because of the large percentage of the 9% of the US um, population is unemployed working population is unemployed um, and also that factories are not hiring factories are moving to China uh, businesses are not hiring because of uncertainty in the economy. Um, so Paul, Paul Krugman is saying that we should make a strong government and a strong economic plan on the social Keynesian, social democratic Keynesian model. Whereas um, Niall Ferguson is saying that there is a structural problem that the fiscal um, restructuring needs to take place because the United States cannot have trillion dollar deficits per year for the rest of the time. But his arguments are also in a paradox because he contradicted himself in a, when he was supporting McCain by saying that, um, it, that ta he sh you should stimulate the economy through tax cuts, as Reagan did, um, but also to get a multiplier effect so he's not disagreeing with Paul Krugman in fact he's supporting Paul Krugman's argument that there needs to be some form of stimulus but not stimulus money extra stimulus money and he's also saying Noel Ferguson that is is that there is um, a, 
the real thing that's going to bankrupt America is the uh, Medicare, which is going to carry on increasing and increasing until it, it basically, because of the, the private and public function, in my view, uh, is what's causing it. Because like an expensive car, you're going to want the best medical plan you can get, and that is always priced as the most expensive. But because of the public part of it, then the government is paying for that at a, over a certain age in the United States. That's how I understand it, America, uh, Medicare in the United States. Um, but his, his contradiction is that he said that debt will be reduced from 21% to 7%. And also he criticised Joe Stiglitz on saying that about the war on terror, the cost of the war on terror. Uh, that's Niall Ferguson criticised Joe Stiglitz by saying that the United States is only spending one percent of its GDP on fighting the, against the Bin Ladens, uh, and this is one percent up to two thousand and seventeen, which is only two trillion dollars. This is hardly a war fighting budget. So, on that respect, I re I agree with uh, Niall Ferguson. Now, in my comment on one of his videos, I said that. Who is correct, Niall Ferguson or Paul Krugman? Well, it depends on what context and what timing you're initiating these um, parts of their different arguments. If you t Paul Krugman said we should borrow now because monet monetary policy and have a loose monetary policy because money's cheap, and we can pay off, we get greater um, tax revenues from expand from having a expanded public works and bank, uh, and nationalizing the banks in that he's correct but is this the right time to do this also Niall Ferguson said that the as I said that there needs to be widespread fiscal restructuring and that's what he's advised David Cameron and also Senator Ryan to do um, although Senator Ryan only got three senators support for that there is also, the problem, the two thorns that uh, Niall Ferguson has not grasped, and nor, nor has Paul Krugman, although he alluded to Alan Greenspan, and that is the um, the Federal Reserve's policies of exporting inflation, and also a, a continuing money, expansionist money supply, which is far beyond that of the ECB. The European Central Bank, which only has about two percent of its um, money supply increasing per year, and so inflation has kept her around two percent. Um, it was also backed up its as the Chinese and Europeans have backed up their central banks' uh, holdings and reserves with hard commodities such as gold, silver, energy, and and other such things. And the other other thing, the reason why America will never cut back its expenditure is the industrial military complex because of each senator as firms wants firms placed in their districts to support their camp military firms to support their campaign for re-election, and this leads into the Israeli lobby and everything else and the Saudi lobby and the the dubious links between the polit American political establishment and uh, feudalist crime families in the Gulf, such as the Saudis and Bin Laden's. And there's that ambiguity there, which is what um, leads to Niall Ferguson, although he didn't say this, Niall Ferguson talking about a, uh, a, a deficit in legitimacy for the United States. Even among the United States allies, there is widespread, a dubious... Um, view of the United States as motives on the world stage and I, I believe that this is perhaps um, harsh but you'd be naive to believe that the United States government was um, completely wholesome even Americans would say that now who in the other the other critical point to make here and this will be covered in part two of this video, is the inherent problems of being too socialist or too capitalist. 